How to carry out line sizing and pressure drop calculation? Line size is calculated by adjusting pipe diameter in a way that the fluid velocity within the pipe satisfies the velocity and or pressure drop criteria as stated by international standards like API 14 East. Pressure drop can be calculated for water services using the Hazen-Williams equation, that is the head loss is equal to 10.67 times the length of pipe into volumetric flow rate raised to the value 1.85 to the product of pipe roughness coefficient raised to the value 1.85 into the pipe inside diameter raised to the value 4.87. And for other liquid and gas services can be calculated using the Darcy Weisbach equation, pressure drop is equal to the product of Darcy friction factor, length of pipe, density and velocity squared to the pipe inside diameter times 2. Explain the distillation column control system. On the inlet line of the distillation column, a flow control valve FCV will be present. On the bottom liquid outlet line of the column, a level control valve LCV and at the vapor outlet line, a pressure control valve PCV will be present. The LCV controls the liquid level in the column while the PCV controls the vapor pressure and in turn the vapor content in the column. If the liquid level in the column falls to a low alarm, the LCV will be signaled to close while the FCV will be signaled to open simultaneously until the liquid level in the column recovers. However, if the liquid level rises to a high alarm situation, the LCV will be signaled to open while the FCV will be signaled to close until the liquid level in the column returns to its original level. If the vapor pressure in the column falls to a low alarm situation, the PCV will be signaled to close while the FCV will be signaled to open until vessel pressure returns to normal. If the vapor pressure in the column rises to a high alarm situation, the PCV will be signaled to open while the FCV will be signaled to close until vessel pressure returns to normal. What are the causes of overpressure in the column? In distillation columns, overpressure can be caused during the following scenarios such as during fire case, blocked outlets, power failure and utility failure. What are the causes of pump overpressure? Pump overpressure can be caused by several reasons such as, decrease in pump flow rate, performance maps show us that as the flow rate decreases, the pressure head increases until the pump shutoff head is reached at zero flow rates. Control valve failure or slow response time. If a control valve in the discharge line fails to close or takes time to respond to process load changes, the pressure produced by the pump could exceed the design pressure of the system. Change of process fluid. If the process fluid is changed to a low density fluid, it will cause a pressure buildup in the discharge line and the instrument and valve failure. Situations like backflow through a check valve in the discharge line can cause a rise in pressure. What are the simulation steps for distillation column sizing? Step 1. Start by opening Aspen HYSYS on your system and adding components and the relevant fluid package. Insert 1, material stream, and 1, distillation column, with condenser and reboiler and make appropriate connections. Step 2. Define the material stream by giving inputs like temperature, pressure, flow rate, and composition. Step 3. Double-click the distillation column and provide appropriate data like condenser type, product stream names, and condenser and reboiler energy streams, after which click, next, step 4. Give the reboiler configuration and type and click, next, provide data for condenser and reboiler pressure and click, next, providing condenser and reboiler pressure data is optional. Click, next. Provide the flow basis, reflex ratio value, and an overhead vapor rate value following which, click, done, step 5. A new window will open. In the, design or monitor, tab, we must make two specifications active to make the degree of freedom equal to zero and have the column converged. The two specifications are the target values that you want to achieve from the column. After providing this, click, run. And step 6, the column can now be designed in the, internal, tab. Click Auto section, which divides the column into two sections as required. Internal type can also be changed to meet specifications in this tab. What is the significance of row times velocity squared value in heat exchanges? A row times velocity squared value is a measurement for the momentum of the fluid in the system where rho is the fluid density and V is the fluid velocity. In heat exchanges, this value helps in deciding nozzle sizes and whether impingement devices are required. 
If the row times velocity squared value is greater than 2250 kg per millisecond 2 for non-corrosive or non-abrasive single phase fluids are 750 kg per millisecond 2 for other liquids, vapor liquid mixture or saturated vapor, then an impingement device is needed. An impingement device is a perforated plate that is installed under the inlet nozzle of the shell side of a heat exchanger to stop the entering fluid from impinging directly over a localized zone of the tubes minimizing the risk of localized erosion. The tube inlet should have a row times velocity squared value less than 6000 kg per millisecond too. What is better? Cross flow or counter current flow in a heat exchanger? The three types of flow made use of in heat exchanges are, parallel flow, cross flow and counter flow, they each have their advantages and disadvantages, however, when comparing heat transfer per unit area, heat exchanges with counter flow have the least required heat transfer area. This higher efficiency is due to the logarithmic mean temperature difference, LMTD value being maximized. LMTD is an average of the temperature difference between the hot and cold feed of a heat exchanger. The larger the LMTD value, the more heat transfer occurs. Explain every unit of the refinery with its significance. The primary units in the refinery process are crude distillation unit CDU, vacuum distillation unit VDU, thermal cracker, hydrotreaters, fluidized catalytic cracker, separators, naphtha splitter, reformer, alkylation and isomerization, gas treating, blending pools, stream splitters. Crude distillation unit comprises of an atmospheric distillation column, side strippers, heat exchanger system, feed the salter, and furnace as main processes. Products obtained include gas plus naphtha, kerosene, light, and heavy gas oil. Vacuum distillation unit comprises of a vacuum distillation column and side strippers. Products obtained include LVGO and HVGO which can be subjected to cracking to yield lighter products. Thermal cracker comprises of a chemical cracking process followed by separation using boiling point differences. Products obtained include naphtha plus gas and gas oil. Hydrotreaters process of desulfurization of products obtained so far using hydrogen obtained from the reformer unit. Fluidized catalytic cracker process to generate valuable lighter products from heavier lower value intermediates. Products obtained include unsaturated light ends, light cracked naphtha, heavy cracked naphtha, cycle oil, and slurry from desulfurized HVGO. Separators, gas fractions from various units are separated based on their weight. Naphtha splitter comprises of a series of distillation columns to carry out separation of light and heavy naphtha from the naphtha stream obtained from several subunits of the refinery complex. Reformer Heavy naphtha which does not have a high octane number is subject to reforming to obtain a reformate product of high octane number, light ends, and reformer gas, hydrogen. Alkylation and isomerization, the unsaturated light ends from the fluidized catalytic cracker process are stabilized by the alkylation process to yield higher octane number products. Gas treating, the H2S gas stream from the previous processes is treated to obtain sulfur along with the generation of fuel gas which can be used for furnace applications within the refinery. Blending pools, to meet product specifications, product blending is carried out in blending pools which there are four of in a typical refinery. Appropriate ratios of previously separated products like N-butane, reformate, light naphtha, ETC, are blended to obtain the desired product. Using equations, explain the impact of viscosity of the heat transfer fluid on heat exchanger duty. Turbulent flow is preferred in heat exchangers as it boosts heat exchanger duty. As the viscosity increases, it is seen that the flow tends to become more laminar as it brings the value of the Reynolds number down where Reynolds number is the ratio of product of fluid velocity, density and pipe radius to the viscosity. In heat transfer area calculations, the dittes boelter equation is used to calculate the Nusselt number. Nusselt number is equal to the product 0.023 times the Reynolds number to the power 0.8 into the Prandtl number. A lower value of Reynolds number would bring the value of the Nusselt number down as well, which in turn, brings down the overall heat transfer coefficient value as Nusselt number is equal to the convective heat transfer to the conductive heat transfer.
When heat transfer area is calculated using this diminished UC value using the formula heat transfer is equal to the overall heat transfer coefficient into heat transfer area into logarithmic mean temperature difference, the heat transfer area value would increase significantly. In this video series, the questions given in Chapter 17 from our handbook, Process Plant Design and Simulation Volume 1, will be answered. The handbook is a must-have for any process engineer with an interest in process simulation, providing you with the building blocks that would eventually have you simulating entire systems independently. Get yours today. The link is available in the description.